something on? Oh yeah, there's the light. Hey everybody, I'm in Banff and everything about this park is big. I mean, really big. Check this out. Right? Look at this. It's so great. Anyway, the coolest thing I've found since I got here is something that's unique to Banff National Park and actually unique in the whole world. And it's really, really small. I mean, you are not going to believe this. That's why I'm making this video and then I'll put it up on YouTube. So let's go check this out. This place is awesome. Oh, wait, let me just turn on the light. This is the cave at the Cave and Basin National Historic Site. This place is really cool, but it really smells. It has that rotten egg smell, which apparently is hydrogen sulfide. And it has this white algal slime. But living on that slime is the tiny Banff Spring snail, and it's an endangered species. It lives in uh, hot thermal waters where we have warm water temperatures into the plus 30s degrees Celsius and uh, it also thrives in an environment of hydrogen sulfide. The snail is unique to Banff National Park. It's a species that's only found in seven locations on Sulphur Mountain and nowhere else in the world. Nowhere else in the world have the forces of e ecology, biology, geology coalesced to allow this particular species to survive or evolve and then survive, except here on a handful of thermal springs in Banff National Park. That is one tiny but tough snail, and those guys really know a lot about it. I mean, it's crazy. The snail is only found in Banff National Park and in just seven tiny thermal springs, all on Sulphur Mountain. I mean, that's wild. And did you know that the total habitat area is not much larger than a basketball court? So the challenge they have here is how do you protect such a small animal? I'm not sure. But Charlie has some answers. Protecting a very small animal is probably not too dissimilar from protecting a large animal. The first thing that you really need to be able to do is protect the habitat for the species. So if we can uh, protect the thermal spring environments, then we're well on our way to being able to protect the species. And they are protected. The Banff Spring Snail and their critical habitat are protected under the Species at Risk Act. Now, I wasn't quite sure what they meant by critical habitat, but Duane was able to explain it. Critical habitat contains all the components that this species needs to live and survive and thrive. For this species, it'll be thermal water, it'll be the microbial community, it'll be the natural processes like the gas bubbles bubbling up from the bottom, the aspen leaves and the other deciduous leaves falling into the water, all those are components of critical habitat for this species. So that's great. The critical habitat for the snails is protected by law and all seems good at the thermal springs. But as it turns out, it's not that easy. Systems change and to be able to stay on top of our understanding of how those systems change uh, means that you have to do the long-term monitoring. And one of the reasons we monitor the snail is to see what, it, what it's doing, to see the populations fluctuate, to see if it gets close to any thresholds before Parks Canada has to take any additional protection measures to ensure that the species survives. Okay, I see. So there are people who work for Parks Canada here every day checking on this critical habitat. They're here looking for any changes to the mat of algae and bacteria that the snails live on, changes in water depth or water quality, as well as any signs of disturbance to the natural habitat, which is critical. Because the populations fluctuate so much, you have to do systematic monitoring. We do it once every four weeks, so 13 times a year for the past 16 and 17 years. So the reason it's important for us to monitor water chemistry is because it answers a number of questions. Snail populations go up and down all the time. Uh, through the season, but also along the outflow streams. So what we're trying to do is relate the biology and the ecology of the species to some of the physical water chemistry. And then we visually count all the snails within each of the different microsites. 
Okay, I get it. All this monitoring and research is what it takes to understand the snail and this fragile ecosystem that they live in. We've heard a lot about protecting these little guys, but wait, what is it we're protecting them from? Dwayne, what are the biggest threats? The drying of the thermal spring is the number one threat for the survival of the species. That's, that's one of the reasons that it is classified as endangered. So something that used to be very uncommon, that is the thermal spring drying, are becoming more and more common. And if you don't have thermal water, you don't have bamp spring snails. So what happens to the snails if these springs they live in all dry up? This is the Middle Springs area, one of the two sites where we've reintroduced the Banff Spring snails back into their historic locations. And uh, since the, uh, the re-establishment of the snails, uh, our recovery actions indicate that the snail populations are increasing and doing extremely well. So that's cool. Snail populations have been re-established in two locations where they used to live. And it seems like the populations are doing really well and even increasing thanks to the work by Parks Canada and the researchers. So way to go, you snails. Your home is safe here in Banff National Park. This site is the birthplace of Parks Canada and the beginning of the national park system. We need to be able to understand how people uh, interact within these environments. And what we want to try and do is ensure that we minimize the, the impacts to the snail while still allowing the public to enjoy the surroundings of the cave and basin. Wow, so the future looks good for the Banff Spring snail and all the other little critters that share this incredible environment. Big and small, Parks Canada does protect them all. Everything we, we know and, and learn about this snail is something unique because you have a, a unique species in a unique thermal spring. If we lost the uh, Banff Spring snail from these environments, it would be similar to losing the grizzly bear on the terrestrial environments and it's something that no one would like to see. Well, thanks, Charlie, and thanks, Dwayne. This was awesome, and I learned a lot. And this place is sweet. You guys have got to check this out. Well, this is Snail Girl, over and out.